Modern websites use JavaScript to give themselves a nice user experience. Things load when you click buttons, data appears and disappears quickly and all without refreshing the page. If you're doing this on a basic HTML website to get any more updated information, you have to visit a new page, which means a new request and a refresh. This is essentially what Ajax can do, but it skips out the page refresh part. As JavaScript runs in the browser, it can dynamically change the information on the screen based on user inputs and state changes, and it does this with Ajax. So Ajax stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, and it uses the XML HTTP request object to communicate with the backend server, the API, making requests for more data. So the keyword that we're interested in here is async, which means it can talk to the server, swap some data over, all without having to do that refresh that we were stuck with before. So JavaScript code essentially just listens for events triggered on the page by the user and acts accordingly and sends that Ajax request off to get more data. But before we get to that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community that can help you level up your skills to invest in yourself and your personal growth. If you're looking to make a career change or maybe just maximize yourself in your current role, you'll find something in the premium classes to get your brain working. I've just watched How to Speak Confidently on Camera, a guide for content creators by Nathaniel Drew. Nathaniel is a fantastic creator who I've followed for a while now and when I saw that he had a class about being in front of the camera, I was excited to take it. I feel like most people's first thing that they go to when they're talking about content creation for video is the gear and the cameras and how to use them. And of course that is very important, but at the end of the day, what the viewer actually gets is you on the other side of all of that. Nathaniel says that this is more of a skill than a talent and after creating loads of videos for YouTube, I completely agree. So the first 1000 people to use the link in the description below will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this and don't forget to check out that link in the description below. The most common use you'll see for this is the load more button or the infinite scroll function that websites use to update their information without making the user click through hundreds and hundreds of pages. Um, you'll see social media sites all do this and that's just to keep you there scrolling away. So let's look at this example. When we scroll down, we see the load more button and when we click on it, we get more products without refreshing the page. But if we look at the network requests, each time we see a new get request being made, the extra product information to display, and it looks just like a new URL that we could click on. That's because it is, kinda. This is an API endpoint on the backend server that is supplying the front end with data it's asking for. The key here is that Ajax made the request so we don't require a refresh. So let's copy this URL from the network tab request and then paste it into our browser. You can see that we actually do get the products back just on their own. This is the content that was being supplied from the original page, just rendered down here on its own. The data has come back from the Ajax request and it's been interpreted by JavaScript and inserted into the page dynamically. So this is a simple page and the code is on GitHub here, so credit to these guys for writing it. When we look down, we'll see a few functions, including one called load more and here is the XML HTTP request that I mentioned earlier. This example is for Shopify but we can clearly see that it's using Ajax to get the data for the next page and adding it to the chosen selector. We can even see the function that removes the load more button once clicked to stop multiple requests accidentally being made. Although the X in Ajax stands for XML, it can transport all the other data types and the one you're gonna see the most common is gonna be JSON, uh, although you will see HTML sometimes too, like in this case. I much prefer to see JSON as it's well-structured and easy to work with. However, here the HTML is ready and is being dynamically added to our web page below the other products. What does this mean if we're trying to extract the data from this page? Well, put simply, we would want to ignore the HTML and try to get the data right from the source, which is the backend API. And to do that, we want to mimic these Ajax requests. As we saw from earlier, it's just an API endpoint that the data is being requested from, so we can just get that data from there too. Well, yes we can, but it's also going to have a few extra complications in some cases because there are usually cookies and sessions that identify the browser we are using that allow these requests to be made. However, often it can be done and it is without doubt the easiest way and the best way to extract data from a website like this one. 
So the data will come back in generally JSON format and will be complete and well structured and done in as few requests as possible. Not forgetting too that one, we're only getting the JSON data back, so meaning a lot less data being transferred that we don't actually need. So a good way to start doing this is to have a look at the website in the network tab and then use a tool, an API tool like Postman or Insomnia. We can copy the request as curl from our browser and that will bring all that data over, including the cookies and the headers, and we can then reproduce that request. So from here, what I tend to do is I like to just start removing headers to see what happens and try changing any obvious parameters to see if you can get more data for less requests. Once I'm happy and it's all done and working, it's as easy as copying the generated code over to your code editor and then changing it or fitting it into your project as you need to. So if you found this interesting, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video next where I actually execute this sort of process on an actual website and show you how to get those products loaded up.